Oh, welcome back my gardening friends. Well I've got you back on the tripod. Hopefully you won't fall down uh, this uh, episode. But this is um, my vegetable harvest uh, for September. And we're going to start off with the small seed potato challenge. So these are our volunteers, the ones we leave in the ground. And uh, this is about the size of what I actually planted in this pot. It did take a lot of um, getting going, but uh, it did in the end, as you can see. So these will grow. We're not sure what we'll get from here yet because we haven't revealed it. There's some growing at the top. They've gone green, doesn't matter. I'll slip my gloves on and let's see what we've got. And again, these potatoes will be in my uh, homemade uh, compost. Uh, there is a video on that somewhere. Let's uh, pull these out. Uh, they've got to go in the bag. These go home. I don't keep those. I go into the municipal bin uh, for composting because we just don't want uh, one blight. So even straight away there, we've got some. Uh, and they say these ones have gone green, but the green ones, if they're at a decent size, there's no reason why we can't use those for seed. You can see there, we've got some manure in the bottom. And then this compost will go into the one of the bays. Definitely not going to be able to find the seed potato on this because it's so small. That compost now has uh, broke down lovely. A few twigs, a few roots, they come on the floor, compost in the like that. Give that a good mix in now. And that can go in the compost bay. But that's not a bad return from a, a pea sized uh, potato. Uh, I'm going to reveal one of my uh, Jerusalem artichokes now, so I'll uh, just tidy this up and we'll bring you back. So this is one of the tubs from the Jerusalem artichokes and uh, they've escaped again uh, out of the uh, holes. Uh, I'm going to reuse this compost we've taken from the potato, I'm going to use this for topping up the others because they're short of uh, compost. And. Uh, they do grow well. Some really good stems on those uh, again this year. I'm going to find my bag and I'll put all uh, the stuff, like the, the carrot leaves from the, dam the uh, carrot uh, willow aphid, and the motley dwarf duck virus on the carrots, all those are going uh, back home. Let's see if we can get this out. Container, reuse the container every time. Now, I've only put one Jerusalem artichoke in each pot this time because I didn't want to get uh, uh, massive tubers. These tubers, once washed, are ideal size uh, for my uh, lunch box. So, I have to be so careful with these that they don't. We're a little bit early, I must admit. But when uh, you see that many, and uh, these are these are what I'm after. M more than likely, we're going to find ones that are, are too big, especially later on uh, in the uh, the season. But uh, I'll have a little play with this, and we'll see what we get. Normally, I'd leave this, and we'd harvest those. Uh, they're very close to being uh, back right. The trouble is, if we don't get them now. I'll have far too many, and then come January, February, March time, uh, they'll be uh, rooting again, so we have to get them out. So I've just snapped one of the uh, the roots off out of the three. The small one doesn't look like it's got anything on it, uh, but we'll, uh, we'll harvest all these, see what we get. Again, you can see what's dropped off and uh, what's uh, actually uh, on here, and I would imagine that's the size that I put in. So you do get uh, quite a, a good return. 
this is why I've reduced the amount of Jerusalem artichokes I'm growing because you eat that lot in a week and bar gum you're going to create such a lot of wind but yeah I bet they're uh, really tasty um, if the viewer that's watching that I'm going to be sending some of these to uh, none of these are big enough so I'll be waiting uh, another month or so before I uh, send anything uh, that's going to be uh, viable these will grow don't uh, get me wrong but there's a certain size similar to that I'd like a few more to be able to send it helps if I plug the microphone in hope you could hear me okay um, wash those uh, few potatoes it's just a an idea of what happens when we leave those little ones in the ground uh, they will grow uh, we've got the Jerusalem artichokes in there just uh, soaking uh, this is my Jerusalem artichokes there's the one that uh, we've just removed so we've had one container out of the uh, six and uh, there are all the roots that are diving about now this hasn't got a bottom on it and I hope to retain them in there this has got to be moved again uh, but um, I'm learning valuable lessons about how to grow these they haven't blew over this time because you can see they're actually leaning on the, the compost bins but that's not great so I'm going to put them uh, maybe in a shelter spot uh, in f uh, behind uh, the uh, the polytunnel uh, when it's uh, a little bit extra uh, got extra height on it so I've got the cover on I do take it off when there's no rain forecast there's no rain forecast now for a while so I'm going to take it off completely and uh, this is a permanent potato bed I'm trying for the first time in lockdown I planted all my potatoes really deep and left them in there uh, we've clearly marked them and hopefully we'll won't lose those marks and then we top them up just before um, or during uh, the late frost so here we have my own sarpo seed these were grown from the little seed tomato pods that grow on the leaves uh, that isn't such a good a harvest as you can see I've cre crept over on that one and you can see where I've been collecting the potatoes from these are the uh, Picasso from Allen. Uh, these are what, exactly what I've fertilized out the ground. It's like a no dig bed, but I could dive down, find the potatoes. Uh, these are the Kestrel. Again, this is exactly what I'm finding as they come up. Uh, more baking spuds there. This is the purple variety. Never got spuds this size when I grew them in containers. Uh, these are the uh, pink fir apple that I had from Steve's allotment and that's one and there's uh, one on its uh, own there so uh, I presume I'll just snap those off and these are the white potatoes that I found on plot one when we actually rebuilt plot uh, when I actually did the hashtag starting a new allotment I found four seed and I've got uh, two rows of this uh, and I haven't gone far back on this one because I'm finding loads of uh, potatoes so let's move off uh, to the uh, carrots so this is uh, bed three out of five this was affected by the um, the virus and but not as bad as the other two beds so I'm going to take I've got this uh, five in a row so we'll see what we get uh, as we pull them uh, that one's uh, split we'll just leave it on the floor there for a moment that's a nice uh, nice size makes up for the other one another nice one so you don't have to pick many when you spread them out and, and thin them now that's split it's got a little bit of damage there but there's still plenty of meat well I'll say plenty of meat uh, perhaps not but it never goes to waste again another one split there We'll take another row. There's two carrots here. Two carrots equals uh, smaller. Okay. 
get plenty of carrot for your money. I think some of these were actually sown afterwards. But I'm going to take them out as we go. I think this one will do it if it's in reasonable condition. Super duper. I'll get those washed and uh, we'll see uh, what we uh, what we have and how much uh, damage the splitting is mainly caused because of uh, the rain. So we'll just move over to the parsnips. Uh, I think I've had three or four parsnips out and uh, they're lovely and sweet. They don't need a frost. I garden differently. If they're ready, I eat them. So uh, let me uh, find one. Uh, well, let's just go for it. Let's not, uh, let's just go for the uh, first one in the corner. Let's see what happens. So push, twist so that we hopefully get as much uh, tap root as we can. Like the, we'll just dump that on the floor. And uh, quite a decent size. A little bit of uh, brownness on it, but uh, that will probably clean up nicely. I've removed all the uh, <sighs> sweet corn, uh, it hasn't done very well, and it's revealed now the swedes that uh, are growing, uh, they were affected by uh, the mildew and everything else, but we'll, uh, we may as well take the biggest and hopefully The rest will uh, fill out. If not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how big they are. There's still plenty of flesh on them. I don't need uh, any kale at the moment, so we can leave that there. The wife's after a, a cabbage, preferably a white, uh, a green one. So we'll be taking one of those. Got a couple left, and uh, let's see if we can. I'm not going to take any sprouts. Uh, the uh, beetroots have gone too far now. Please grow slowly. Else I'm not going to have any for Christmas. They're all going to be eaten. And there's that bed of uh, purple um, sprouting broccoli. We normally get to harvest off that in February and March. It's a long-term crop, not short-term. People dig it up at December time thinking they're not getting nothing give it patience patience my friends it will come I'm fairly caterpillar damage free even though we've not netted and I've only sprayed it a few times with the neem oil I think it's the neem oil that it's the smell they don't like the beans nothing left on the beans I could scratch around for a few but uh, we're letting everything uh, go to seed now very important we try and save some uh, seed of uh, all the varieties that uh, we're growing here we'll only have one bed not two beds next year this one will be the asparagus and i think i will be planting it um, before the winter on the recommendations i've had square foot gardening vertical gardening i'm going to take a celery out of there so you'll see that uh, shortly uh, when mrs k wants some tomatoes i'll strip those down get them emptied out but considering how long some of this stuff's been in it's not doing too bad at all and there's the uh, new zealand spinach that's on the vertical gardening. If you look back at my last uh, Mars Hydro um, TS600 video, the ones under the grow lights uh, are doing extremely well. So it was well worth taking that one in. So we've got the best of both worlds. The raspberries are still giving. Um, we've got enough punnets uh, at home, so I'll be leaving those another day. And way and behold, we've got uh, a second harvest uh, of uh, strawberries uh, 
Uh, one for me and one for me. I'll tell her there's only one. Excuse me. Shall I take it home? No. Very, very nice. Everyone told me to be patient with my uh, apple trees. There's a few marks on them, but they are doing extremely well. And uh, I've had one already, not my best one. And they're not quite ready, but it's nice to be able to pick your own off a tree. This one's a different variety. I don't know what the varieties are because I bought them cheap from the uh, cheap stores and uh, you don't know what dwarf stock you're getting they tell you what it is but I don't think it is and you don't even know what uh, apples you're getting I love Cox's orange pippin and uh, I didn't get none of them I've got two Braeburns and uh, that one and hopefully next year we'll have some pears all the trees are pruned down now to around about six foot so uh, shouldn't get a letter now and uh, the grapevines had a good air cut I completely removed it out of the greenhouse as well as the uh, pomegranate uh, bush I've still got to get the uh, stem and roots out I'll do that uh, before uh, the end of this month so I mentioned that I'd uh, had a good tidy up at the entrance to the plot I was after some bricks that didn't take me long did it these were buried in a footpath by the look of it for many many years uh, handmade bricks so they'll uh, they'll clean up nicely in the weather and I've also got the base uh, for the uh, woodwork on the polytunnel when we uh, raise it up uh, a meter so everything's coming up to that height uh, there's uh, another four more down that end um, I'm going to probably put one there one there revert it around the corner so I just need a few more these are just road curbs uh, the ones that uh, are on the drive accesses and I've forgotten how heavy they are and everything's ripening up nicely now we've got rid of the grapevine it's still in the corner still gonna keep it and we uh, say so we're all right for tomatoes at the minute melons are doing okay I'm gonna leave them on the plants as long as we can we've got a funny two funny cucumbers I know what that cucumber feels like dear me what an end that's got on it and uh, we could pump some weights with this and uh, I've removed all the uh, water feeding bottles from there <laughs> I thought we got rid of all the grapes the wasps and flies haven't spotted those I've uh, topped up the uh, brood balls and as soon as I've topped them up uh, they were all uh, all coming through so pleased with those and I've prepared this bed uh, for Alan's uh, from the Dawn Chorus plot uh, the walking onions and no doubt this one here when it's cleared will be for the uh, shallots that he sent me looking forward to doing some pickle onions next year so they've just been roughly washed I don't like to take any soil home and put in the sink uh, leave the soil here on the allotment we can tip it away we just have to be very careful with those Jerusalem artichokes okay thank you for watching guys um, I don't think I've got anything else to show you at the moment but uh, jobs for September are going well and I've got the uh, leggy tomatoes to reveal and how I rejuvenate my uh, parsnip and carrot beds uh, ready for uh, the following year and we're doing a little experiment with parsnips which I'll be sowing shortly I normally sow them in about February March I'm going to sow them uh, in the autumn some old seed see what happens take care from my friends happy gardening to you all till next time to Rafa now